This is the Artillery Sidewinder X1 3D printer, and I've been asked to make a review about this for some time now. It has a ton of nice features, and we'll talk about this in this video. Actually, I'm quite satisfied with this kit, and is a bit better than expected. Strong frame, clean look with no loose wires, fast hitting bed, and huge volume. Super silent drivers, color touchscreen, direct driver extruder, synchronized dual lead screw, resume printing, Wi-Fi and a lot more. In this video we will see what you receive with this kit, talk about the main specs of this printer and the cool parts, see some prints and give you my final opinion. See the links below if you plan on ordering this machine. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back! This here is the Artillery Sidewinder X1 3D printer, and it's a printer that I was asked about a lot. Nowadays most low-cost 3D printers have kind of the same features, but different shape or color. But it seems that this one has a few extras that are creating hype over the 3D printing community. Also have in mind that this printer is a few months old, and is continuing to improve with the help of the community feedback and so on. First of all the look is a bit different, and that's because of the use of these ribbon cables, that makes the frame look a lot cleaner. There are no loose wires, protective tubes or zip ties all around. All data is transmitted through these ribbon cables. Now there are some people who say this might be a potential point of failure in the future, because while printing these ribbons are moving all the time, and there is the possibility of breaking, since they are not as strong as copper wire. I can know that for sure without using this printer for a year or so. But aside that, with these ribbons, the printer looks a lot cooler and clean. By the way, in the kit you also receive some spare cables, just in case, so I wouldn't worry too much. Now let's see some more amazing specs. The printer is huge, probably one of the biggest that I have, with a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400 mm height. This is probably one of the biggest i3 style printer that you could buy at this price. And don't worry, it is very easy to assemble. You receive it in two parts, and all you have to do is to tighten four screws in order to join the base with the vertical part. Then you have to screw in place the spool holder, fix in place all the connectors, and it should be ready to go. Anyone should be able to mount this very easy and fast, and you have all these steps in the given manual, so don't worry. Another cool part is that the printer uses the Titan Direct Drive Extruder. That means the filament could flow a lot easier than with Bowden, since there is no friction with the interior of the Teflon tube. Also that means that printing flexible will be a lot easier. Usually for these big printers they all use Bowden, because having a huge step motor on the x-axis, which is quite big, would result into a lot of wobbling around, and might ruin your prints. We need to keep the x-axis as light as possible, but in this case they've used a smaller pancake step motor, with gear reduction, so it's not that heavy, and also the base of the x-axis, this linear rail here, is very thick, and is using V-rollers, providing better support. That's why they went with the direct drive extruder for better results. Now for the heated bed. It uses direct AC voltage from the main outlet. That means it will heat up very very fast compared with 24 volts DC voltage. With high AC voltage connected directly, you might say this could be dangerous, but it looks that the power cables are thick enough and well insulated. For me this is a positive feature. It also has good insulation below for better temperature results. Now the bed level is manual, but you have an assistant and is easy to do, as always using a piece of paper and the plastic knobs below the bed. The bed is made out of glass, and it has that kind of anycubic ultra base surface, which I do like. When the bed is hot, the surface is very sticky, but once the print ended, it cools down. The surface retracts and you can easily remove the print. The entire frame is made out of metal. It uses V-rollers for all the movements, and the base is metal as well, and very heavy, so all this results into a stiff frame with low vibration. To control the printer we have a color touchscreen, which is quite easy to use. The menu is not that bad. As for the printing methods and connections, we have SD card, USB cable connection, USB storage and also Wi-Fi connection. Some of the extra features are for example the filament outage detection. We have this sensor here, filament is passing through and when it's over it will pause the print automatically. At the same time it also has a power loss recovery, 
So if by mistake your printer shuts down, when you power it back on, you have the option of continuing the last print from the same spot. This is always nice to have, just in case of a power down or maybe unplugging the cable by mistake. One of the best feature and maybe my favorite is the use of silent drivers. Hey guys, this is just a sound test. As you can see, you can hear me talking, but there is no sound coming out from the motors, from the step motors of the printer. This is so, so silent. Now we're even closer to the printer and all you can hear maybe is the fan, the cooling fan, but nothing more. This is very, very silent and smooth. As you can see, this printer is very low noise due to the use of those silent drivers, so we have practically no sound coming from the step motors and also less vibrations, resulting into a silent printer. I could easily work with this printer in the room. The limit switches are inductive sensors and they work great. For the Z-axis, we have a lead screw and step motor on both sides, and we also have connection between the lead screws with a timing belt, so both sides should be synchronized and go up and down at the same time, keeping the print leveled. They've also implemented some sort of damper for the Z-axis lead screw, in order to prevent layering, but I can know for sure if this works over time without a lot of printing time. So as a recap, these are all the main features of this machine, and I think these are enough to make me want this printer a little bit more than others. Metal body and stiff frame with V-rollers for movement. Very clean look with no loose cables. Super quiet step motors drivers for almost no sound. Fast heating bed with AC voltage, with huge printing volume, made out of glass with ultra base surface. Filament detector and power down printing resume. Direct drive extruder for less drag and easy flexible prints. Dual lead screw for the axis with synchronized timing belt. Low drag spool holder with rolling bearings. Wi-Fi connection, USB cable, SD card and USB flash drive printing. To open this printer we have to take out just a few screws. Below we can see a fan that will move the air all around, cooling all the parts. We have the power supply of 24 volts. Since the heated bed is powered separately, this supply doesn't have to be that powerful. To control the power to the bed, we have this solid state relay. This module could handle 220 volts AC. All the cables are routed very nice, and there are small PCBs for connectors, so inside of this printer is also nice and clean. The main board is the MKS L generation, with interchangeable drivers. So if one breaks down, we can change it very easy. All these are trinamic drivers, with very smooth output, and that results into silent motors. These are a bit more expensive, but totally worth it. On the other side we have the touchscreen PCB with the buzzer, the USB and card reader. All wires are well insulated, so everything is nicely positioned inside of the metal case. All prints turn out good, and I've made tests with PLA, nylon, PETG, ABS and flexible. I started with PLA, and the first print was the test cube, and it turned out wonderful. Very good layers, no loose strings and perfect finish. So if this one is this good, all prints should also be. The next print was also with PLA, and it was this face object. Once again, good layers, but this time we have some errors below the ear, because I didn't use support material. The rest of the print is quite okay. All my prints were made with 0.3mm layer height, 2 perimeters and 20% infill. In PLA I've also printed a Benchy, this chameleon print, a test cube and two vases in spiral mode. And as you can see all prints turn out pretty decent. The Benchy is ok, good layers and best of all no loose filaments. The chameleon print also had some loose filaments due to not using support material and printing in mid air. The vases as you can see turn out very good as well, I had no problems printing this and they were printed very fast in spiral mode. After all the prints in PLA, I've also printed this part, that I will use for a future project. This time this was printed with 0.2mm layer height, and the results were a lot better. This turned out quite good and the walls are smoother. Ok so these were the PLA prints. I've also printed with nylon. I've made this chest part, and also two screws cases like these ones. Both prints turned out ok, and it seems that nylon could be printed as good as PLA. Then I've made some PETG. I've printed this Groot face and this Fox example, 
both with PETG and the same settings as before, 0.3mm layer height. For ABS, I've just printed the test cube as always, and there were some wrap layers at the bottom, but not much. And in general, it went quite good with ABS as well. I've also tested flexible at very low speeds, around 25mm per second, and made it this belt. Using the direct drive extruder, I'm quite sure it could go a bit faster, but I've made the print a bit slower to be sure. So these were all the prints that I have for now, and I've got to say that going to 0.2mm layer height made a big difference. At 015 it would be even better. So guys, these were pretty much all the specs about this artillery Sidewinder X1 3D printer. I hope that you now have a basic idea of this machine in case that you want to buy it. Right now the price is around 339 euros, which for these old specs, the print value and the build quality, it seems a good price. I'll put some links below if you want to order it. On certain times, there might be some coupons as well. I hope that you like this video and that it will help you choosing you a good printer for your projects. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the bell. Thanks again and see you later guys.